This is an exercise to develop a PID or proportional integral derivative controller for a temperature measurement by adjusting a heater. We're going to have the PID controller adjust the heater to try to maintain a temperature set point. And we want to first of all obtain a model. The very first thing that we'll do is do a step test with a graphical fit to obtain our PID tuning parameters. We're going to use SimTune for this open up the SimTune package and then go to the AP Monitor TC lab do the single heater and then set this to manual and then the output to zero so the initial heater value will be zero percent and then we'll just go ahead and start this it's collecting the real data we'll change this output to 70 percent for our step test now you could go to a hundred percent the temperatures temperature will get much hotter than that I'll go ahead and just um, you know, use this slider bar here on the bottom to adjust what I'm looking at as this step test is happening. Okay, so it's going to uh, keep going, and then I'll fast forward it a little bit here, and you'll see the step test happen. It'll get up you know, much higher to about 160 degrees or so at the final temperature. So I'll start about 70 degrees and make it up to about 160 in the end. What I'll do is uh, stop the recording of the data and then we'll save the trend as well. So at the very end you'll want to save the trend just so you can order the data and uh, I'll save that and save the figure and then we'll go ahead and just write on it and see if we can identify some of the parameters of our first order plus dead time model. Okay, so after this is done, we'll go over it and just identify, first of all, our gain, which is going to be our delta Y over delta U. I have my approximate delta Y of about 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I have my heater change of about 70%. So that gives me 70 divided by 90, or about 1.3 or 1.29 degrees Fahrenheit per percent heater. Second thing I want to do is come up with my dead time estimate. This is about the amount of time that it takes for the system to start responding. If I had a uh, first order plus dead time, so it has to be an exponential decay to the new value. Dead time is about 15 seconds here. The third thing I want to do is come up with uh, my, my time constant. So my time constant is going to be how long it takes to get about 63% of the way to the final Y value. And the delta Y is 90, so that's going to be 57 beyond my 70. We're about to 127. So I'm going to draw my line there and then draw the tau P segment and then the theta P. Okay, tau P always starts after theta P. There's a tau P of about 110 seconds. So those are my estimates just from my graphical method. Now we're going to do the second one, which is going to be a doublet or another sequence of steps. It could be like a pseudo-random binary signal or other type. And then we'll optimize. We'll optimize this uh, with the FOPDT parameters, the first order plus dead time parameters, to adjust to minimize the sum of squared errors between the measured and model value of the temperature. So I'll go ahead and start this one out after I've let it cool back down. And this one is going to be a series of steps. Now the length of steps, you don't want to make them too short so you don't see a system response, but you don't want to make them too long or you know you, you defeat some of the purpose of, of getting uh, you know this uh, you know rapid steps, generate more information from your model. I generally like to wait about two time constants between steps. So in this case, uh, you know, maybe 100, 100 to 200 seconds between steps um, for each one. This one I did a little bit shorter just to show. Okay, so you don't want to do it too fast, uh, but you generally want to do steps as large as the system will let you to give yourself more excitation of the system. And so I'll just move those up and down to different levels. And then we'll take this data and we'll try to fit that to our first order plus dead time model. So here's my sequence. I can save this graphic as well. And the most important thing I want to do here is save the data. And I'll click uh, you know, the stop button here uh, to stop recording. And, and then we can import that into 
uh, into our fitting program. So to do that, uh, when we're done with this, uh, you know, the data collection, I'll let it level out here about 50% for a little bit. We'll stop the recording and then uh, we'll start it again and go to this tools and then process, you know, parameter identification, navigate to our trend data. And we'll get to the latest CSV file, select the time, the PV, and then the output. We've got to select those columns. And I can just look at the values here that it produced. You can see the data that's shown up above graphically. Now I want to be able to you know, adjust some of my solver configuration to obtain this. I'll identify the model. You'll see in the first time it goes through this, it doesn't do a very good job of fitting the, uh, the model. And so sometimes you need to just kind of guide it with some bounds on the variables like the gain and the time constant. And you can see that it's going to then fit uh, very well in the end. It'll minimize the sum of squared errors and you can see it updating as it uh, changes that. Okay, so I've saved another figure. There's the results right there with the KP, tau P, and theta P that it produced. And now we want to come up with our PID tuning parameters. And so let's just do IMC and then IMC, you know, PI and PID. We'll do both of those. Okay, so now we have, um, you know, the next thing is we'll come to get our PID parameters or PI. Let's just start with PI and I'll start with aggressive tuning. And so I need a tau C value. So that's going to be the max of 0 0.1 times tau P and 0 0.8 times theta P. So that's 18.664. And then I'll come up with my KP or KC. And then I'll also do my tau I, which is going to be just be equal to tau P. And then tau D is going to be equal to 0. And then if I want to do the PID, Okay, and uh, let's just do moderate tuning for this. You know, you could do aggressive or moderate. Um, you know, I'm going to just start with moderate, I think. I think I'll actually change the IMC PI back to moderate as well. Okay, and then I'll just put in these correlations that you see at this web address. These are the, uh, these are the IMC tuning correlations with moderate tuning. Okay, so it just requires calculating it. Now, we should have something that's, you know, for the moderate tuning, that's somewhat close to the reciprocal of, uh, one, you know, just 1 over KP. And so we got, um, you know, KP is 1.3, and then my KC is 0.55. Okay, and then my tau I is 141, and my uh, tau D is about 10. Okay, so let me go back to the PI and just put in the moderate tuning there instead of the aggressive. Okay, and so you can see that KC, tau I, and tau D for both PI and PID. Now what we'll do is we will um, now we'll get these PID parameters and we'll implement them. And uh, you know we've gotten the PI control and then also the PID controller. And then the final step is going to be to implement and tune the control response. So the final thing, we'll come back to SimTune to do this. And instead of in manual mode, we'll put it in automatic mode. Okay, and in here we just need to put in a set point of 110. You can put it whatever you'd like, auto. And then here's all the you know different types of PID controllers. There's Allen Bradley. There's Honeywell. And I need to put in my gain, uh, my controller gain, and also my reset time. And my derivative is going to be equal to zero. It's just going to be a PI controller. You see, this is going to be a little bit sluggish. Okay, so it's not going to do uh, you know go quite as fast as we'd like. And we'll see. Just fast forward it here. You can watch the output. Is changing from 24 to 25 to 26, but everything is very slow. You know, changes are happening very slow. We don't see a lot of movement in that. Okay, so not a lot of integral action um, or the gain there. 
So what we need to do is, you know, increase that a little bit more. We'll go ahead and use the aggressive tuning instead. So let's open this back up again and just come back and get my aggressive tuning. And I'll just change these, you know, for both of them. Okay, so now we have aggressive tuning. I'll just go ahead and uh, capture this one just so we can uh, see it off to the side as we put these in in SimTune. Okay, so let's try aggressive tuning with a PI controller. So this is proportional and integral. It's about, you know, about four to five times the gain that we had before. And a similar reset time, but just a strong, you know, a higher gain. Okay, so it starts out almost close to 100% on that. And is going to reach the set point with just a little bit of overshoot. Okay, so you can see it going. Uh, and just a little bit of overshoot in the end but fairly close to you know what we wanted uh, you know nice and aggressive let's go ahead and try out after this is done let's try out the PID as well okay and in this case uh, we'll put in the higher gain and the higher time constant and also the derivative you can see there's a lot of derivative action there that we don't want I'm going to put this at five seconds for the filter time, and that's going to reduce the amount of noise that's amplified just because of the small fluctuations in the temperature that lead to a lot of actuator movement, in this case heater movement, because of the, uh, you know, that I didn't have a filter in there for the derivative value. Okay, so we're going to see this one. Performance is a little bit less than what I wanted with the you know the PI controller but overall very nice performance so thanks to APCO Inc for providing this software and interface to the temperature control lab interfaces are also available in MATLAB and Python